Hello, everyone. You are listening to Your Palm Beach Guide with the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. My name is Keanu Rivera, and I'm the Vice President of Membership here at the Chamber. And today, we are joined by our guest, Alexa Evans. Hello, hello. Hi. (laughs) So you all know the drill. I'm going to give you just a quick bio of who Alexa is, and then we're going to jump right in and learn everything we need to know about her. So first, Alexa Evans is the founder of Untrending Marketing, a boutique agency specializing in marketing for service providers, nonprofits, and arts organizations, a theater graduate and active alumni from Eckerd College. She has spent over a decade honoring her marketing and event planning skills in the corporate sector, small business sector, and at the Maltz Jupiter Theater, where she worked in their fundraising and education departments. She founded Untrendy Marketing six years ago to help service providers achieve timeless, trusted brands for their well established businesses. She is also a two-time finalist for The Reelies, an award show highlighting reels created by solopreneurs, content creators, and entrepreneurs. So wow, welcome Alexa. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Kiana? You know, I can't complain. Life is good and I'm just re... I am trying to revive myself from Tuesday's breakfast Mm -hmm. because... Same. Right. And so you recently joined as an ambassador. So what did you think of that? Just how was the first breakfast? Tell me a little bit about that. It was great. I mean, we had a great turnout considering it's the tippity top of season. (laughs) Uh, So that was really exciting to see so many familiar faces back in that room. Right. Uh, You know, our panelists were super engaging that uh, I'm not a big football girly myself. Shh, Mm -hmm. don't tell the masses. (laughs) Uh, But even I found it it very entertaining. So, yeah. Well, and I just love the fact that it is the crack of dawn and we have all of these people that show up ready to talk, ready to network. And honestly, like you volunteering and our team of ambassadors, how early you guys get there and just the support that you provide to me, I am so thankful. So thank you. Thank you for signing on this year. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so excited excited. to be a part of it. Yes. So real quick, I want you to start at the beginning because I know briefly about your story just from meeting you in the past and stuff. And I feel like our paths have crossed so many times over the last couple of years. So please just tell me what made you even start to look into, hey, I want to open my own business. I want to take this journey. I want to take this leap of faith almost and say, I can do this for myself. Kind of walk me through it. So I've always had a little bit of an entrepreneurial streak in me. Uh, My mother, Sylvia Evans, is the founder and president of Palm Beach Accounting and Financial Services. So she has had uh, an accounting agency based on Palm Beach for over 14 years now. And so as a teenager growing up, I really got a behind the scenes look at like what it takes to run a company. Um, She really did a phenomenal job of like making me aware of everything (laughs) that that takes and uh, always really forward thinking, always trying to work technology in as much as possible into her firm. And so, you know, I started, you know, Untrendy LLC with the idea of it being a blog. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the pandemic hit, I was working at the Maltz Jupiter Theater. I had been in their fundraising department and their education department for about three or four years. Oh, wow, long time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, helping to produce their galas every year. Uh, we coordinated a trip to London with some of their donors that was oh, also fabulous. fantastic. That was one of my first projects yeah. working with them. Um, and before that, even I was a student. So really spent a lot of time at that theater. I called it my, uh, lovingly, my Devil Wears Prada job yeah. because, uh, as Andrew Cato will tell you, working at the Maltz Jupiter Theater will prepare you for anything that you do after that. Really? Oh, my goodness. Yes. So um, I definitely would not be where I am today without uh, both of those two key players. Well, um, and then how did you get to Jupiter Maltz? You, are you from here? You grew up here? And yeah. And did your, did your thing here? Yeah. So I am a, a native. Palm Beach mm. County person. Uh, my family, honestly, we're probably like fifth generation Floridians. We've nice. been here a long time. Good deal. Uh, so I was in dance classes as a student growing up. And okay. uh, my first show at the Maltz Jupiter Theater was my senior year of college. It was Fame the Musical. Ah. And so I was a student and then I became a teacher. And then uh, Julie Rowe, their artistic, or I'm sorry, their education director mm. at the time, while I was working in the corporate sector, was like, we really need to get you back into the theater world. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. And then from from Jupiter and the pandemic happened, take me, take me again back yeah. there. So pandemic happened and you're like, okay, I'm not working at Jupiter anymore mm-hmm. because of the pandemic, right? Yeah. So we had a really successful 2019-2020 season at mm-hmm. that theater. And as a result, we were able to retain our staff 
through the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. Wow. With like salaries and everything. That's um, a huge deal. It was like, a huge yeah. deal. And they did a really good job taking care of their people after the fact too, because, you know, our health insurance was fully paid for until we received a comeback letter to, wow. to work at the organization. So I was really just biding my time and had right. this LLC and was doing some freelance work. Uh, and I ended up with a couple accounting customers from of somebody, of course, right? that I had worked with. And she had gone on to take uh, a formal position at a, at a company instead of doing her own thing. And so I started in December of 2020 with like three or four accountants doing right. their marketing. And it just kind of grew and grew from there. And uh, pretty organically, I went from like, you know, managing those customers and holding down a part-time job mm -hmm. uh, at Social House, right. which was the venue where you and I met yeah. at. And, uh, and then ultimately made the leap to running my business full time. And now wow. we have a team of four, myself included. Wow. That's yeah. just incredible. I think too, I want to go back to what you said about just the accounting side of it and having to market accountants because so many people think, I mean, accountants, so like you crunch numbers and like, you're just the numbers people. And the fact that you brought in a creative space into that world, I think just speaks volumes of your creativity alone because accounting is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so necessary too. Right. And, you know, finding a good accountant is like kind of like finding a good therapist. Right. They have to know mm. how your business operates, know what your industry is like. And, uh, you know, I, I would say that each accountant, even though the practices of accounting are the same, right, right? you know, your checks and balances, uh, how accountants serve their customers and what they specialize in right. is different from one firm to the other. So even though I work with four or five different accounting right. and bookkeeping companies now, you know, none of them are competing with each other. Right. I think, too, what's amazing is so – accounting and that stuff is just not my gift. Mm -hmm. I've accepted it and I'm okay with it. I don't need to try because it's just not my role. And so I just thank, I just thank the heavens because we have two big time accountants that are sit on our board. We have um, Darren Hershowitz. He's not, he's the, basically he's at the breakers. He's the head finance guy at the breakers. And then we have um, Janice Salo and she runs our bookkeeping here. And I just remember I would ask them so many questions and they were so patient with me. Because it's almost like I need you to describe it in like layman's terms. Like just take it down a notch, okay? You're up here. Mm -hmm. I'm like right here. So I just loved how they were able to explain it so clearly for me to understand because I was like, just walk me through this. I don't have any background on it. So I love that you said too, the firms aren't in competition with each other when it comes to that. And that's really incredible as well. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, for these service providers who have had their businesses mm -hmm. for years and years, they know what their customers are, they know what their expertise is. And so my job is just to come in and make sure that any mm -hmm. place that they're present, whether that's online, in person, you know, it, in a mailer, all of right. that looks cohesive and tells their story in a really compelling way. I think too, um, well, real quick, you're listening to your Palm Beach Guide with the Palm Beach Chamber. Our guest today is Alexa Evans with Untrendy Marketing. And I want to talk about this name, just to transition real quick into why Untrendy? Just, it's so popular. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Untrendy was born of a conversation with uh, me and my best friend when we were, you know, first playing with the idea of having a fun blog. Mm. And... So you started a blog with your friend? Well, I tried real hard to start tried. a blog. Okay. And so, you know, it, the blog kind of happened, but I always had a full-time job and everything else. Right. So the name Untrendy mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily like with the intention of turning it into a marketing direction right, right away. Uh, you know, when I started my marketing company, I had the LLC established, so I just ran with it. Right. And the idea of being untrendy is something that has kind of stuck with me my whole life. You know, I was never like a preteen millennial running around in Abercrombie yeah. and Hollister I know, and all right? of that. Like me neither. Like, me neither. <laughs> that wasn't me. And so I was I was always not trendy. And so the idea of the phrase untrendy is kind of empowering because trends come and go. Right. And like I'm here for the long haul. I want to look back at something that I wore you know, years right. ago and still love my choices still that I made. Right. And our companies that we work with too, they're timeless as well. You know, mm -hmm. they don't they don't deserve to be a flash in the pan organization. Yeah. They're trying to sustain their own livelihoods. Right. So timelessness is what we're all about. I love that. And I love that you have this whole story behind it. You didn't just pick it because it just sounds so good. You like, you really thought about it and was like, this is exactly what I want to represent for my business. 
and for the companies that you serve. So I think that's incredible. Thanks. I want to talk about just some of the projects you've worked on that you have really said, you know what, this this is my heart and soul, and I'm really proud of the outcome. What are what are some of those? Mm. So one of them was Urbanite Theater's Modern Works Festival, which just wrapped up this weekend. Okay. So that was a festival involving uh, 35 theater artists. 35? 35. And where was it based? In Sarasota, Florida. Okay. So they're a small black box theater. Most of their productions are somewhere between mm. one to four cast members. Okay. Um, and they predominantly create or produce uh, modern works by uh, a really diverse range of of playwrights. Mm. So this particular festival highlights women playwrights. Mm -hmm. uh, they had three finalists and three staged readings. And so throughout the course of this festival, you know, their plays are getting revised and rewritten and they're hearing audience feedback in real time. And it's such a vital part of the playwriting process. Oh, wow. And so to really get the Sarasota community to buy into the idea of this right. festival, um, was was something that we were able to accomplish. And some of the marketing collateral that we created for it, it was just so, so pretty. Oh uh, so that, Don't you love it when you see something that you've designed and you're just like, this is gorgeous. Like I want to frame it or something, even if it was collateral. But still, yeah. you knew that you were like, okay, I've worked really hard on this design and I want the world to see it. Yeah. We, so uh, what were, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, but you're what totally was, fine. What was some of those things that you created? So, you know, we created all of their print collateral, all oh. of their social media marketing. I worked with my graphic designer, Chris Velasquez. Uh, she is phenomenal. She also, uh, we met at the Maltz Jupiter Theater nice. as well. So okay. I, I keep my people. That's good. Um, and so she and I worked really closely to create something that like, Harkened back to how long playwriting has been around. Right. Like, so we went back to ancient Greece and oh. then we thought about how do we modernize that? How do we make it look a little bit more current? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she's uh, our, our statue for this particular poster was uh, wearing sunglasses and blowing a rebellious pink bubblegum <laughs> bubble. And it was just, uh, it just, came into this really beautiful, neon, modern, classical looking, oh, honestly, work of art. Right. Yeah. That's what it turns into. And then you're, because you have both of these creative minds. And I love that you said, like, you bring your people with you. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what it's all about. Like, we have this community here. And I think just to take it back to business, I mean, you've been doing business in Palm Beach now for over six years and you grew up here. So you really understand how this world works. And so many people come and then they get lost and they don't understand. They don't have a real direct vision of how do I do business here in a really classy way, in a efficient way, and also longevity. How am I going to be here for the long haul, like you said? And so I love that you have focused in on community aspects of, of that work because so many people just you know forget about it or they don't even focus in on the fact that I have this incredible team around me. How can I pull them in for other projects, mm -hmm. you know, or even like past experiences with Jupiter Maltz or mm -hmm. past experiences with, you know, my job that I had years ago. It doesn't matter. Like you have those people in like your Rolodex that you're just like, this would be a really good person for this role. And I think that just goes back to, to women supporting women. Shout out women. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I love that. When, um, when you were working in Sarasota, how long was the campaign? You said it was just a weekend or? So the festival itself was five days long. Okay. And, you know, we really started promoting it at the beginning of the summer. Uh, first, we had to market to playwrights to okay. submit their works for the festival. And then once we had our festival finalists lined up, it was marketing to the public during the slowest season of right. the year, by yeah. the way, uh, to come to the festival at the top of the season. So uh, that looked like a lot of social media marketing, a lot of email marketing. We also were able to get some uh, pretty strategic press, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's it's a really great opportunity, one, to engage with the theater at a really affordable price point, and two, to help progress works forward. Right. You know, so it, it makes my job really easy yeah. when there's a product that I'm excited to right. sell. Right, exactly. I think, too, I, I want to transition a little bit after this festival because – you mentioned in your bio the Reels competition, mm -hmm. and I've been seeing it all over your social media because you said it's coming up this weekend. Yeah. So tell me about that. How? What is it? So the Reelies is sort of like mm -hmm. the Webbies, okay. right? So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Webbies, it is uh, an award show that has existed probably almost as long as YouTube has mm -hmm. existed uh, for content creators online. And the Reelies is – is really designed for people who run small businesses, who are solopreneurs, who are entrepreneurs, 
Uh, and it it's a platform for folks like me and my mm. customers to have their work highlighted. Okay. Uh, having, you know, a, a feather in your cap that says you won an award is a really yes. great uh, thing to have. And so the founder of The Reallys, Manu is her name, uh, she, she really wanted to give back to her community in that way. So there were a ton of categories. Mm. Uh, I submitted 10 reels, a couple for myself and a couple for my customers. And we had two of our reels selected for the uh, best costume award. Nice. So putting that theater degree to good use. That's so good. Uh, and if any of you saw the reel last year, it was picked up by Worth Avenue Palm Beach on Instagram. Yes. Uh, me and my very good friend Jesse trolloped around Worth Avenue in satin sheets like little ghosts, <gasps> uh, playing off of the ghost trend that was so popular at that right. Halloween time of year. So we're looking to do that again this year. So I'm I'm sure you'll see that. That's a, incredible. So you literally just poked around Worth Avenue in a ghost costume. Yeah, and sunglasses and designer heels. Oh my gosh. At 7 a.m. in the morning. Well, and how did that concept kind of happen? I mean, I didn't I knew about the trend in advance. Right. We had actually planned to do it the year previously, and then, you know, just through uh, a fate weren't able to execute it that right. particular October. But the beauty of this particular trend is there are not a lot of social media real yeah. trends that exist year after year after year. And right. I think this one has been around for four or five years now. Wow. So we just took advantage of it last year, not really expecting much to happen. And it got like 17,000 impressions on TikTok and it got picked up by Worth Avenue Palm Beach. Wow. So yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And so what happens then this weekend with this award? So this weekend, we're already a finalist, which is uh, in my book is a win yeah. in and of itself. Um, so me and Jessica, who is in the video with me, uh, she and I will be flying from PBI to Atlanta. Wow. Staying at this adorable little hotel called Hotel Claremont. Okay. And then the award show is Sunday night. So we'll be like walking a red carpet, <gasps> drinking champagne, taking lots of photos, and then fingers crossed walking out of there with an award in our hand. That's incredible. I will be thinking of you guys. Thank this you. is amazing. Thanks. And too, just the fact that your hard work, sometimes things just happen by accident, like you said. And and that is where the best creativity lies, I think, when you're not so stressed about how do I produce this? How do I make it amazing? You just go and you say, we're going to do this. It's going to be fun. And then other people see it and, and enjoy it just as much as you do. So yeah. kudos yeah. to you. Thanks. And Atlanta, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. I mean, done is better than perfect, right? right. All of the time. Absolutely. So, so as, as we finish up here, can you please share, because sometimes – People don't, I mean, still in this business world, marketing is just so scary for so many companies. They're like, well, how do I even do a social media post? How many times do I have to post? And what's the difference between email marketing and social media? And why do I need both? And all of those things. Kind of what would you share to people who are listening, especially chamber members who are small businesses, who are large businesses all together? How can how can you provide them with solutions that they're looking for and just some key takeaways in the marketing field that they should be aware of? Yeah. So the beauty of the work that we do is that it's holistic. So we know as a small business that you have so many other priorities than coming up with ideas for social media content, for newsletters and things like that. So we really work to take all of that off of your plate so that you have one point of contact that can take care of it all for you. Right. Uh, the second thing that I'll say, some key takeaways that a lot of small businesses don't realize about marketing. Um, you, one, your consistency and how you show up directly reflects people's how people will perceive the consistency of your work product uh, and your services, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go ham on social media and you send uh, 15 posts to publish in one month and then you're radio silent for two months, somebody who's trying to vet you is going to see that and they're going to use that information to inform their decision about whether or not they want to work with you. Right. So it might not seem that important, but making sure that, you know, even if you're only posting once a month, quite honestly, as long as you're consistent with that, that's better than the alternative of posting 15 times one month and then not doing and anything then, for yeah. free. Well, and then going radio silent because like you said, it's a direct reflection of that. So I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. yes. No, you're fine. Uh, you know, and the other thing I would say too is people think about, oh, I got to get out on social media. I've that's where I've got to be. That's where I've got to put all of my resources. Your email list is your most valuable asset for marketing your business. If for whatever reason, God forbid it happens, your social media account becomes uh, inactive, Instagram or Facebook flags it, takes it away from you, a hacker gains access to it. Uh, mm. By the way, turn on two-factor authentication yeah. if you don't already. Uh, if that happens, how do you communicate with your audience base if you don't have their emails 
and you don't have a mailing list, even if you're not regularly communicating with them through email, mm. you're not going to be able to pick up in any sort of situation where you lose access to your audience in a more public fashion like social media. Right. Oh my gosh, that's I'm so glad you said that because people do those actions. Like you said, they'll put all their eggs in one basket and then something happens and they're like, well, this was everything that I had. And then you're like, well, now we got to start over. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's just kind of like, I'm glad that you really said that. So um, Alexa, thank you thank for you. being on today. And if you want to learn more about Alexa, her information is on our website with Untrendy Marketing. And you can look at the directory. She's also an ambassador with the chamber, so she will be at events. Um, and you can always just email me and I can share her contact information with you and follow her on social media and all the things. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kiana. Mm -hmm.